Hey everybody, welcome to another week here at the Tour Learn. We made some wonderful progress this week. You can see I'm standing right there where previously we had a wall. Julia and I were able to put up the temporary walls and now afterwards Rick helped me put up the beam. Now you can see the wall is down, everything is nice and open here in the dining room and kitchen area. Opening this wall is an inviting way to bring guests into our home. In the past, guests would have been taken into the parlor room, but now they can be greeted and brought straight back to our kitchen. We are also excited about this change because it will highlight the curved wall that runs through the center of the home. As I'm prepping here for a beam, or really a wall first, I'm going to uh, finish this wall here and I have to put, according to the specs that we calculated yesterday, we have to put 6 inch worth of support underneath there and the support is supposed to go all the way from the top, so wherever you put the beam, if it's in the second floor or in the first floor. Um, it's supposed to be supported all the way, a continuous way from the top where the beam is to the basement floor. I have a pillar right underneath here. That's kind of also why I'll be choosing this spot because we have a pillar in the basement that sits right underneath here, starts at 87 inches, which is right here at this joint. I'm actually gonna go a little over, but then I'm basically needing to take this six inch of the floor out because the floor doesn't have any support right underneath here. So I wouldn't pass inspection if I do that. So there's a beam underneath there, big wood beam, eight by eight beam in the basement that sits on top of the pillars. So I'm gonna take this floor out and then support my wall here on this beam. So I'm gonna take out the six inches here plus another for another stud because you always want to complete the, the wall on the outside of the beam also. So I'm gonna put, take probably another three inches out so that I can potentially do a double wall spot right there too. Here you can see a little closer what I've been doing. There is a subfloor that runs diagonal, the pine wood floor that I have both cut through now. And you can see now the pocket that I've been talking about uh, where we wouldn't be supporting it all the way down as a continuous um, support. There is a wooden beam underneath there that spans this opening about halfway through where my finger is, is 
the spot where there's a block and concrete built pillar. And I'm going to set obviously now my beam right on top of that so that I can guarantee continuous support of the new beam.
says. I'll put it to my lips. Check. That's what it says on top. Nail embedded wood. That's exactly this is, what this, this is. is. Hardwood. This is, this is hardwood here. This is just good. This is soft hardwood. Or yeah. hard softwood. This is hard hardwood. No, this is not hardwood. I'm supposed to put the blade in, right? Yeah, it's insane. Color me impressed. Did we catch that on film? <laughs> it's an engineer, by the way, learning how to put a blade in a uh, reciprocating saw. hurricane straps to attach the joists with the beam so that the beam and the joist can't really go anywhere and they are attached to each other securely. So here's a close-up, three screws on each joist and the beam should be plenty. Apparently my battery died on the last shot where I took down the temporary wall on this side. So we have just the temporary post over here. It uh, takes a load of that double joist up there. So let's take that down. You saw me put in a lot of the screws here into the beam itself. I put those in every foot. On this side, I have every foot two screws and then, well, every other foot I have one screw and that's because on the other side, I have two extra screws that are in parallel with these single screws to put in. And that's to sandwich two of these beams together so that they become one unit 
and when you have to when you do those calculations they always do them as one unit and it's just called plies so it's a two ply beam and therefore we need to screw those two plies together one other important thing you have to do when you calculate one of those beams is you have to know the right width here where the, the beam is going to sit on you can see here in this case i have five on them and i have four on the other side we actually calculated with four of the two by fours on each side so six inches wide but because I am sitting just right on the corner of a pillar be below me. I put an extra one so that we are sitting a little bit more center on that pillar. That brings me to the next point. When you put a beam in, the most important thing is the load has to be continuous all the way into your basement. Um, if you have a basement or crawl space into the dirt basically there, there have to be a concrete pad. In my case, I have uh, pillars right underneath me that support a beam over here and I'm going right on top of those concrete pillars and then these pillars continue to load down into the foundation slash the dirt underneath us, the ground underneath us. So it's always important that you don't have them just sitting on top of your subfloor without anything because otherwise that subfloor is not going to be able to support the beam and the whole weight of the house. So here you can uh, tell what I'm talking about. I have those two by fours coming down on top of this beam and then that sits on top of this pillar underneath it. Um, you can see only two of them that are in line with the pillar and that is because the two on the left are actually the wall studs that are running all the way on the left side of the beam still all the way up. So those two have to sit on top of the pillar but you can see here that pillar then continues all the way down to the ground and then sits on top of the foundation. Another week goes by and it is great to see things getting crossed off the project list. With some help from a friend, a new support beam is in place and the open kitchen and dining room are taking shape. This wraps up our framing projects for now and we have moved on to plumbing. As always, thank you for your support, comments, and engagement. And be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next week.